Hi, I'm Maitre Darrett, consultant urological surgeon. Um, today I wanted to talk about a subject very dear to my heart, and this is kidney stone disease. Uh, it's a very common disease process. Um, so what are kidney stones? Um, these are essentially salts that form in the urinary tract. Um, they usually form in the kidney due to a chemical imbalance of um, substances in the urine, but they can travel throughout the urinary tract. Uh, they're usually made of calcium, but they can be made of other uh, compositions such as uric acid, um, and rarely they can also be genetic. Uh, the number of people uh, in the United Kingdom who have kidney stones is on the rise and uh, the lifetime uh, risk of kidney stone is now roughly 13%. We used to find uh, it was more men than women that used to get kidney stones. Uh, however, the uh, ratio is now equal and is one to one. And the biggest rise in incidence is in young female women. Um, so there are several risk factors to kidney stones. Um, diet, uh, including how much fluid you're drinking, but also there is a genetic link and up to 25% of people have a family member who also has kidney stones. Uh, certain medications and certain um, abnormalities in the urinary tract anatomy in people can also cause stones. There, there is a rising trend in, uh, and a link between diabetes and obesity um, and kidney stones and this is probably what's accounting for the rise in the young female population getting kidney stones. And we also know that urinary tract infections can be linked with kidney stones as well. How do you know if you've got a kidney stone? Well, unfortunately, um, some stones have no symptoms at all and are found incidentally on a scan for another problem. However, one of the common types of problems people can get is back pain. That pain can be mild, but it can be severe and it can lead to a hospital visit to the emergency department. Um, it can be associated also with vomiting and nausea. There can be uh, blood in your urine, uh, which you may not be able to see and can only be found in the urine dipstick, or you may see fresh blood as well. And there are links with urinary tract infections. Occasionally, it can also cause your kidney function to deteriorate and your doctor may find this when you have a routine blood test. The best way to uh, diagnose a kidney stone is via a CT scan. Uh, a CT scan gives you uh, very re reliable views uh, and is a very quick and effective way to get uh, the diagnosis. It also will tell you how big the stone or stones are and which part of the urinary tract they're in because this will determine whether you need treatment or not. There are other um, options of uh, imaging that can be used and occasionally we use x-rays um, as well as ultrasound imaging but they're mainly for follow-up after we know you have a diagnosis of kidney stones already. So a lot of people won't need treatment but there are certain um, indications when people would need treatment. Firstly if they're in pain um, and um, the pain is not being managed by any form of medical treatment, then intervention is required. Um, if you have an infection and a fever, then this is an emergency situation in the context of a kidney stone and uh, emergency treatment will be required for that stone. If the stone is big and it's unlikely to come out on its own, um, then uh, a discussion regarding upfront treatment to prevent the symptoms and the complications of that stone moving and obstructing your kidney should be had. If your kidney is blocked um, with or without symptoms it's important to get that seen as an emergency as you may need emergency treatment. If someone's had uh, kidney stones before and would like their kidney stones removing because uh, they don't want to go through the symptoms such as pain with that then that's another good indication to have treatment. And finally, if your kidney function is deteriorating, that's a clear indication as well to uh, seek help for treatment. So I'm fortunate enough to have done one of the largest studies looking at patients uh, who have got kidney stones with no symptoms at all. 
uh, and we followed up patients, over 350 patients for six years and found 60% of patients actually had no symptoms and were still fine at the end of that study period. So there is a uh, number of patients that can simply be monitored. However, patients that do have symptoms or a the younger, more active patients are more likely to get symptoms in the future with uh, even small stones. So treatment options for them include shockwave lithotripsy. Uh, shockwave lithotripsy is a um, outpatient procedure. It does not require any general anaesthetic. You lie in a shockwave machine and we use sound wave energy to travel through the body to break the stones. Um, it's a very useful treatment for small stones and stones which are stuck in the ureter pipe, which connects the kidney to the bladder. It's a get up and go kind of treatment and uh, you do not require a prolonged hospital visit. The downsides of it are mainly to do with um, stones which are bigger and it's less effective for those stones or stones which are very hard in density uh, as is unlikely to work for those uh, and it can't be given to patients if they have an active infection or they're on blood thinning medications which can't be stopped. The next form of treatment option is a um, general anaesthetic procedure called a urethrorhinoscopy and we use laser technology at that time to fragment stones within the ureter or kidney. This essentially is a small telescope which passes through the urethra into the bladder and we can navigate into the ureter and kidney to locate the stone and get direct visualisation of the stone. We can use an internal laser fibre at that time to fragment the stone and we have endoscopic baskets that can remove the stone completely. The advantage of this is it's got a very good success rate. Um, it is a day case type of procedure in up to 70% of patients. Um, and um, there are no incisions in the body and a very quick recovery. Uh, this is by far the most common type of surgery we do perform for kidney stones. The downside is um, occasionally you need to have a ureteric stent uh, which is a plastic long tube which can cause bladder irritability and kidney pain and that may need to be in for a few weeks after the procedure. The final option um, in modern uh, kidney stone treatment is keyhole surgery called percutaneous nephro nephrolithotomy or PCNL surgery. Um, there's been a a, a big change in this type of technology and we've started to use smaller and smaller instrumentation called miniaturized PCNL surgery. Um, I do probably the most of those or one of the highest volumes in the country. The main advantage of this is uh, an incredibly good stone free and success rate and it's by far superior to the other two modalities. Um, the downside is, is that you do, it does involve a small incision in the back, roughly five or six millimetres, uh, to pass instruments directly into the kidney to break the stones and, and physically remove them. Um, there's usually an overnight hospital stay and recovery is still very quick.